Good afternoon everybody. In the lab today we are going to talk about clostridium perfusions. So first we are going to start talking about some general information of this bacteria. Clostridium perfusions is a spore forming gram positive bacteria that is commonly found on raw meat and poultry. However, it also can be found in the environment and in the intestinal tracts of humans and animals. This bacteria prefers to grow in conditions with very little, little or no oxygen and under ideal conditions can multiply very rapidly. Some strains of Clostridium perfusions produce a toxin in the intestine that causes illnesses. Clostridium perfusions also can survive to high temperatures. So during cooling and holding of food and temperatures from 12 to 60 Celsius, the bacteria grows. It can grow very rapidly between 43 and 47 degrees Celsius. So different species of Clostridium are considered catalyst negative because of their anaerobic nature. Also, this bacteria ferments carbohydrates producing acid and gas. Most of the acid produced is butyric acid, and the gas is composed primarily of carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Now, we are going to talk about uh, Clostridium perfringens in the environment. Where can Clostridium perfringens be found? The presence of small numbers of these bacteria is not uncommon in raw meats, poultry, dehydrated soups and sauces, raw vegetables and spices when these are cooked and held without maintaining adequate heating or refrigeration before serving. The spores of some strains are resistant to temperatures as high as 100 degrees Celsius for more than one hour. Furthermore, the oxygen level may be sufficiently reduced during cooking to permit growth of the Clostridia. Spores that survive cooking may germinate and grow rapidly in food that are inadequately refrigerated after cooking. An estimate of 1 million illnesses in the United States each year are attributable to Clostridium perfringers, but fewer than 1,200 illnesses are reported annually with Clostridium perfringer outbreaks. Even though these bacteria cause a lot of illnesses each year, testing is not routine for foodborne outbreak. In September of 2016, the Connecticut Department of Public Health was notified of a cluster of gastrointestinal illnesses among persons who share a catering lunch. A case was defined as the onset of abdominal pain or diarrhea in a lodge attended before 24 hours after the lunch. At the end, 16 people got ill. All of them reported eating the beef. So according to the information recorded, the cutlery had begun preparing all dishes the day before the lunch. Meats were partially cooked and then marinated in the refrigerator overnight. In the morning, they were sorted two hours before lunch. So inspection of the facility found that limited refrigerator space to be full of stuck containers that were completely filled with cooked food, disposable gloves that appear to have been washed for reuse, and a porous wooden chopping block. The media used for enumeration of Christian perfringence consists in per performed tests to detect presumptive and then confirm the bacteria in the food sample. So we are going to start talking about uh, tractor sulfide cyclocerin agar. So this media is used for the isolation and enumeration of vegetative forms as well as spores from crostium perfringens in food. The TSC agar utilizes the selective inhibitory properties of D-cyclocerin 
and an indicator system involving sulfide and ferric iron. Most unwanted organisms are suppressed, while Clostridium perfringens and related species reduce the sulfide and form black colonies due to the production of ferrous sulfide. Then we have thioglycolate broth. There is a multi-purpose and rich differential media used primarily to determine the oxygen requirements of microorganisms. Its components are L-cysteine and sodium thioglycolate, which allows Clostridium and other strict anaerobes to grow in the medium even under aerobic conditions. So thioglycolate medium binds oxygen. The top is oxygen rich, the middle oxygen poor, and the bottom lacks of oxygen. For example, Crostium perfringens will grow only in the regions it can tolerate, in this case at the bottom of the media. Now we have the iron milk test. So for this test, you inoculate modified iron milk media with 1 ml of the actively growing fluid thioglycolate culture and incubate the media at 46 Celsius in a water bath. After two hours, you check hourly for stormy fermentation. This reaction is characterized by rapid coagulation of milk, followed by fractioning of cord into spongy mass, which usually rises above medium surface. So, cultures that fail to exhibit stormy fermentation within five hours are unlikely to be Clostridium perfringens. So all of the previous tests were to determine the presumptive presence of Clostridium perfringens in a food sample. Now we are going to move to the tests that are going to confirm the presence of this bacteria. First, we have the motility nitrate media test. So Clostridium perfringens is not motile and will reduce nitrates to nitrates. So for motility, growth should occur only along the stop line. This bacteria should be negative for motility. Then, for nitrate test, you add two reagents, A and B, to the culture in the buffer nitrate motility media. If a violet color develops within five minutes, indicates the presence of nitrates. Another confirmation test is the lactose gelatin media test. So, Clostridium perfringens produce acid and gas from lactose and will liquefy gelatin in 48 hours. You should observe the tubes for the presence of gas bubbles and a color change from red to yellow indicating the production of acid. Then, you chill the tubes for one hour at 5 Celsius. If the media doesn't gel, then the culture is positive for gelatin liquefaction. If the media gels, you need to re-incubate the tubes at 35 Celsius for an additional 24 hours and recheck the tubes. So now let's talk about the flow for food testing of these specific microorganisms. So the protocol we will have used in the lab was to create a one and ten dilution of the food sample in buffer pepton water. This sample will have been stomached and then prepared zero dilution from the sample homogenate. Then you have to transfer 1 ml of appropriate sample dilution to one plate per dilution. Then pour 10 to 15 ml of tritosulfide cycloserin agar into the plates and let them solidify. After the plates solidify, pour an additional 5 ml of TSC agar over the plate as an overlay. Then you have to prepare a gas pack for use. Place it in an aerobic jar with the plates, and they have to be upright, and seal the jar. Then you have to incubate at 35 Celsius for 24 hours. After incubation, you have to pick two or three typical colonies and inoculate tubes of thioglycolate broth using a loop. 
then you have to incubate the tubes in a standard incubator at 35 Celsius for 24 hours. After the incubation of the thioglycolic culture, you have to inoculate one ml of the actively growing group of this media into the modified iron milk media. Then incubate at 46 Celsius in a water bath. Then after two hours, you start checking for coagulation in the milk. Finally, for our confirmatory test, you stop inoculate motility nitrate and lactose gelatin media from each tube of thioglycolate broth. Then you incubate at 35 Celsius for 24 hours. After this incubation period, you can confirm the presence of clostridium perfringens in your food sample.